kind of counterintuitive cycle. We were announcing stuff that was not launching for a very long time. And then actually we would get to the point where we would reveal more new stuff before the things we talked about previously even launched. Right. It was causing a lot of confusion in the community, a lot of people not quite understanding what's going on. And it made things feel like they were really far away. Right. So what we're doing right now is we're shifting the way we're going to reveal content. Yeah. That's key the thing is the reveal. We're still going to be creating our updates at the same pace as always in our skins and our balance patches. And I'll get into a little bit more of that in a minute. Yeah. Yep. At the same pace, but we're going to be revealing it a little differently. So <clears throat> what you're going to see here is that things included in the second half of an update will not be on the update show or in the PTS. Right. They will be revealed on the next show because then we'll be able to reveal it on the show and it'll release shortly afterwards and everything will make sense. What? So content for the first release will, and, um, will still be in the update show and it's gonna create this nice alternating schedule, which if we bring up this uh, calendar graphic we can look at, which is a little more clear, show everyone how it's gonna break down. Right, yeah. So as you guys can see on the calendar, we're kind of doing some changes to the way we do PTS. Pond, do you kind of want to talk about our new changes to the PTS cycle? Yeah, so when we have our PTS, it's really there for the community to get in, experience the new content, find any issues that might arise that they can find in an external environment that we might not be able to find inter internally. Um, but given the nature of how we also hammer on those PTS builds internally, we often are coming up and down. It's really regular <laughs> for anyone who wants to play on PTS to actually know when they can play on PTS. It just kind of causes this disruption. So rather than causing this disruption for our players, we're going to schedule out when PTS will be available, kind of set up a nice block of time where everyone can get on the same page, get online and play the, the, the PTS while also letting our internal team also look at the, the build without too much disruption. So this is a pretty significant change. PTS will not be live okay. after today's show. Correct. Correct. And that is intentional because we will still be using it internally. Yes. Then we will have dedicated player PTS weekend, which will, going forward, I mean, it's, this is always subject to change, but going forward, it will always be the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday after the update show. That'll be the only time that PTS is available externally. Right. That way you won't have the QA team bringing it down and kicking everybody out and everybody wondering when it's going to come back up and all that kind of stuff. We'll get dedicated time for our players, dedicated time for our team, and hopefully the whole system will go a lot more smoothly. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for that, guys. So the last thing we need to talk about about this whole new patch cycle, update release cycle schedule. A little uh, spicy. No PTS. And, uh, I think the players are actually going to like it a whole lot more, too. Uh, bonus balance is what we kind of coined it internally. AJ, do you want to kind of talk about bonus balance and what we're going to be doing? I do. I'm, a very, ex I'm very excited about this one, especially Pond and I, because we want to be able to react quickly to balance. And we're on a monthly cycle now. Sometimes that makes players feel like certain balance issues in the game persist a little longer. Yep. We want to make sure that philosophically, we as a team are reacting to these issues. We take them seriously. We take player feedback. It's really important to us. Yeah, but I don't know why they're not fixing the audio. We found some ways where we can actually ship you more balance changes even sooner. And yes. that's what we call it bonus balance. So really what we're going to be doing is for each update, <clears> so say we're, we're talking about the 7.2 update now, a certain part of the 7.2 update, we will actually be able releasing two weeks before 7.2 launches. So it'll kind of be in between 7.1 and 7.2, and that was on the calendar as well. And that is gonna be a, a select set of changes that we can ship early. And uh, Pond, why don't you tell them a little more specific about what types of changes are gonna be part of bonus balance? So the big thing here are the changes that we know that we can do nece without necessarily code support or without art support, because those types of things take updates. You actually have to get different game files. But some of the stuff is just number tweaks that we can do kind of on our back end, um, as well as we wanna target the things that we know are going to be the highest priority for our, for our players. So things that are very frustrating and ranked or might be creating a negative experience that while we might want more data for some changes, these ones we have enough data, we know these are frustration points, so that way we can target oh. those uh, with direct number changes and get them out to you quicker so that you guys can actually feel the ease of frustration sooner. And I think people are gonna be really excited because this bonus balance, you're gonna get this very soon, uh, yes. uh, early next week, I yeah, think. Next yeah. week, uh, currently planned for February 11th, I think. So you won't have to wait all the way till 7-2 and we're gonna nerf some of the meta gods real good. Has, yeah. So all those people waiting for those Yemoja nerfs, Heimdall nerfs and stuff, you're going to get them two weeks earlier coming to you in bonus balance, exactly. which we'll get into the details here in a second. All right, yeah, let's go ahead and get down into the nitty gritty. So let's get right into the bonus balance section. These changes are going to be coming your way next Wednesday, February 11th. Oh, be sure okay, to, so know, keep mini, for media. the mini patches, you're going to have updates on that. Patch as well for you guys to keep your eyes on. Uh, this will actually, the bonus balance is going to be coming alongside the second half of the season seven content, right? Oh, yeah. So the Valentine's yeah. Day chest stuff, Chibi, Ymir, and also the first bundle in the Jade Corruption event with uh, Olerun and uh, Bacchus. So let's go ahead and get right into it. We've got items up first 
for bonus balance. And this is more of a fix, uh, some changes to Witchblade and Toxic Blade. Yeah, when well, we created the the new tier two branch between the two, the cost of those uh, tier three items got adjusted and unintentionally too high. So we're fixing that so those items are at their appropriate cost. So not the most dynamically what? shifting I didn't even know that. first bonus balance, but one that we can actually fix and make sure those items are utilized well. Right. Awesome. I've been paying more so for Toxic right Blade the whole it, time? Guys. Alphabetical order, first up, Bastet getting a little bit of a nerf in the bonus balance. What's going on with Bastet? Well, since the rework, her, her play count and win rate has skyrocketed, especially in ranked conquest, which is one thing we were really excited yeah. about because Bastet always had been described as something that could have been good in, in casuals or some more relaxed games, but didn't really have that skill cap to, and that late game presence to actually benefit from real competitive play. Right. But it seems like she's doing much better now. We see her stats being really high. We want to tone down this damage a little bit just to make sure that she's not overwhelming, overbearing. So you're going to see that 10%. And it's going to be scaling on pounce, which that's a very yeah. high scaling ability just up front. And that also changes the ultimate damage too. Right. And we wanted to make sure that we did not affect her early jungle clear, which is one section where even though she's, she's succeeding, that's not necessarily her strong point. So the so one, the two, and the two hit for 1,000 with your ult up right, late so game, and your three a can do over 1,000. And Gallahorn. Pond, can you kind of just touch on what we're doing with Heimdall? Yeah, so Heimdall released. Uh, he was pretty strong. We took a lot of damage nice. on this kit. We actually saw the damage numbers decrease significantly, hey, although well, they are still have? high. So we're doing some more nerfs. Something. And the big thing was we're targeting some key community frustrations with uh, his overall kit. The basic attacks that he provides are very hard hitting, and even though theoretical DPS is pretty equivalent for the timings, the way it's used, where you're canceling out of things, where you're knocking someone up into a basic attack. Imagine uh, an ability that has land, high damage, really hard, a knockback, so and back, protections. The uh, for Gellhorn, that is a 5% nerf on the per tick. So when you channel the full duration on someone, you're actually losing, I believe, 30%. Scaling off the whole device. It's a big scaling. That's here. a big oh, and scaling a slow. Here for just one that ability. a lot of damage. Yeah. As well as we are removing a whole component of Gallahorn. It's kind of one of those abilities where you're always in the right. If you just channel for full damage, you're protected from damage from the protections that you get. Um, if someone jumps on you, you just need to get them off you. You can cancel it really quickly. Now, if you choose to channel for the full damage, people can fight you back more effectively. We're removing all the protections that you would normally get from it. So that's again a whole part of that ability removed. Awesome. Bonus balance, uh, right? Bonus balance. Bonus balance. Heimdall Heimdall doing less damage. Nerfs. Is well, dude, they're going to nerf the emotion. Yeah, if they nerf the one, I'm going to fucking early. cry. That's great. Yeah. All right. So next up, another uh, big meta community nerf, Odin. We're going to be decreasing the damage on Gungnir's Might and making a change to Ring of Spears. This is just damage tweaks down all over the place. Nice. We did this a lot during the PTS. Fuck you, Odin. It's we not much of a nerf, though, the place that we were at all. Good about. He went live and his play count and win rate is through the roof. Like 15 Odin is damage. Doing incredibly well right now. So we wanted to make sure we just go ahead and react quickly. What up, Carbon? He's going to be seeing big damage changes. I mean, adding all this damage together, it's quite a bit that he's losing. So this god has a whole new way of fighting, a whole this new way to approach 15 damage. Teams. That's really good. That's really interesting. That's great <laughs> for the character. But he was just doing a little too much damage, even being able to build full yeah. tank. His three shouldn't still do slow. Too much damage. So that's why you're seeing all base damage. I'd rather remove the slow than nerf the damage. Pulse damage on Gunger's Might, the throw damage on Gunger's Might, and the spear escaping the ring damage, which. Well, they're nerfing the other shit too. I died to yeah. that actually the other day. Right. And I was yeah. like, that hit me a little harder than I thought it was going to. But it seems like a lot of people are experiencing that. So we're taking yeah. Odin down a notch. 20 damage on the throw, wow. Forward, especially Odin Bastet. Um, and 20 damage on the ult. Okay. Stuff, so all right, that's all around pretty good. Out. All right, next up on the list for bonus balance, we've got Susano and Gathering Storm. We're going to decrease the physical power scaling <laughs> from the bonus ability damage from 60% <laughs> to 40%. <laughs> Yeah, really he's been on the, the upper end, and we've done a few nerfs over season six. Even on I PTS, know he's annoying, feedback, but like, where the fuck did that come like from? We're missing in, in the season seven initial patch, um, and we've just seen that he's continually been able to. How's he lose twenty percent scaling on our ability? Defense. And Odin, um, they nerfed nerf from nerf from fifteen damage the initial bat because we know we what? have some concerns around junglers and like their role on the map. We knew we were making a lot of I'm just that's 80, it was also that's, with that's him. so much damage. Uh, even after seeing how he survived season that's seven. That's like 80 damage. Really, really well. Late game. Uh, we realized he needs more nerfs, and so we focus on reducing the passive effectiveness. Seems like he's doing really well in the new, in the new meta so yeah. far. And I think it's interesting that this Wait, that's his passive? something like 60% total power scaling removed across his hit, his kit, over the last two, uh, mm -hmm. couple updates, which is a lot, and he's still performing really well. It's so really random, well. so though. I haven't heard anyone cry about Susano in months. Specifically to this passive, because this is really hard to play against. It's really mm -hmm. hard to react to. Uh, opponents don't always know which ability is going to have this bonus damage, and then all of a sudden, Susano just hits you way harder than you were expecting. 
Uh, and we want the counterplay to be there. So hopefully this should help ease the frustrations quite it's a bit. It's so and random. This, this is gonna take I like the idea behind it. It's just so, awesome. to me, it's random Next as fuck. Up is Thor, Berserker Barrage, one of the key components to his rework last season. A little bit too potent. They're so nerfing the three. Three changes here. Can you can you kind of go into detail oh, what happened shit. with the Berserker Barrage? Yeah, so uh, again, kind of similar to Sano. God we saw damn. Really, really Bro, him. why are junglers um, really getting nerfed again? Two early clear and gank potential. Um, he's been at the top of the ban list Still for a while. That's three so junglers getting nerfed. To him, we're doing a more aggressive targeting to one of his major strengths, which is just his late game ganking strength from Berserker Barrage change, as well as the amount of cooldown it has when <sighs> his clear is a little bit slow down. So cooldown reduction going up by two sec or sorry cooldown going up by two seconds the scaling on per hit of the berserker barrage going down by five percent and the final hit going down by ten percent so that's so a 25 percent nerf total. Oh. yes and the one thing to note is that cooldown change yeah those cooldown changes often don't look this like that much and a lot of, of players gloss right over them but those are generally very impactful in the stats he will have a little slower jungle clear yeah he will have a harder time re-engaging in a long fight yep and those th that matters it really adds up so there's a cuckoo nerf there's an army nerf don't fucking nerf my emoji jungle bitch so we nerf the two sure we got a good open field to start the season off they nerfed mm -hmm. my All one right. on yemoja last item for I'm quitting. bonus balance coming your way next week yemoja getting some changes here moon strike that is the alternate version of the one decreasing the inner area magical power scaling decreasing the outer area magic or po magical power scaling, and decreasing the stun duration on that as well. And then Mending Waters, we're Why? decreasing the shield health on that. So Yemoja Why really the stun duration too? Why all of it? Across the Heimdall patch. Like, yeah. kind of at the Nerf beginning. Nerf the two, bro! During, uh, her launch, people were kind of like, oh, she seems good. People took a little while to get used to her. Once they learned how to play Yemoja, though, everyone was like, this god is insane. Yes. And throughout that, and we also did some buffs and some adjustments. They're nerfing the two also. So throughout the Heimdall patch, she was just rising, 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 rising. Yeah. Oh my and god. We were keeping a close All right, Yemoja's still OP, though. Feedback, so now we're moving this. Doesn't moving matter. This Yemoja's still OP. Sure you don't have to wait another month. So she's going to get the nerfs. Mostly you're seeing the scaling Halo, no. there, and that's to prevent the mage Yemoja from getting a little out of control. Yeah. She can do a lot of damage. That's okay. But we don't like this being the primary way to play her. She's it's designed to be a guardian. Needs to have no, a little bit lower damage. No, mage Emoja, bitch. And that stun duration is going to help preventing people from getting kind of caught in the stun lock. Right. Um, there are ways to maneuver your way yeah. out of it, but it seems like a lot of players are feeling that stun You're lock. You're still so going to get stun locked. And Mending Waters is just a very powerful ability. There's a big debate in the community about what's yeah. better, right? The one or the two. Um, Honestly, the pro feedback has often told us that the, the two shield. Yes. So with late game, when Yemoja can just throw two after two after two in the middle of a team fight, and your whole team stays yep. healthy, stays topped off, stays with If they didn't nerf the two, strong. I would have fucking raged. Mm -hmm. So we're getting a big nerf there. The too. two's late so game is broken. Six of the top played, top banned, top meta gods all getting heavy nerfs. And all of Where's the Zanami and Cuckoo? Early, so yes. you don't have to wait two more weeks. Yeah. To play with those. Things. Where's my buff to a jungler that I play? Awesome. Super mm -hmm. excited about bonus. Mercury balance. Remember those changes that we just went over and headed your way February 11th, next Wednesday. And all the changes that we're going to be going from this point on are going to be released with the major update when the Mulan update comes out. That's tentatively scheduled for February 25th. So uh, let's go ahead and get right into the major update balance. Uh, let's start off with some changes to Conquest. Uh, we've got some changes to backdoor protections on phoenixes uh, let's uh, uh kind of go into that uh right now that's uh with the enhanced fire giant uh that buff in particular is how we're targeting the change this was a common community uh discussion after the patch notes if they nerf so the enhanced fire yeah. giant I'm a lot of people pissed. were surprised that we hadn't adjusted anything as, as involving late game sieges mm -hmm. Um, and we've been noticing this a lot in our ob observation of players. Yeah. The, the late game sieging technique, it has a little bit of nuance to it. Yeah. Kind of pushing multiple waves and being careful not to overextend and then calling for objectives. And it's very easy to make very bad mistakes is really what we learned. Yes. At that stage of the game, it's really easy to, if you get wiped off that mistake, the enemy team can just reverse push and negate a, a whole game's worth of lead. And so we wanted to give teams and players a way to more kind of secure that lead if they have it. And if the game is even, of course, this will this will help you siege, but it won't actually determine the siege. But if you have a significant lead, you're going to have to make a little bit more of a mistake to actually lose the game with this change. And this benefits players of all skill levels, yeah. which is why I really like it. It prevents some of the newer players from making so many uh, over over diving and not even getting a Phoenix and making oh, those what the fuck is the change? errors that cause the team to come back. 
and for more veteran players, it will make it harder for people to kind of pick those turtle comps. What right. is the and fucking even though you change. feel like you're ahead, you've taken every fight, you've taken every fire giant fight, they still just won't let you into the Phoenix area. Yeah, this should help you do that too. Tornado, killing all the minions, and you're going, yeah, well, yeah, well, yep, yeah, well, my minions are gone. So, How am I going to siege? This should be really good. We're really excited about this for players of all levels. Awesome. And then our last conquest change, the Alpha Wait, what Heart was the is change? going to be increasing the base XP from 40 to 50. Lots of community talk about how the Alpha Harpy maybe didn't feel as important. Am I a fucking moron? What the fuck is the change? That we didn't want to make it squishier. Yeah, That's correct. an important thing. And we want to make sure we talk about that because if we hey. make it too easy to kill, <laughs> no, no, no. then it, in, it <laughs> encourages a more solo played side of the map. What the fuck is the yeah. change? So we want to make it hard to kill. We still want to make it um, deal a lot of damage, have a lot of health, but the reward was a little low. So you're going to see a 10 okay. XP increase, but keep in mind that scales over the game. So that's going to increase throughout We're the whole game. We're just talking about it for 30 seconds. It's going to be worth a little more. Not even like we three still minutes. Don't overdo it doesn't it. even that hear really risk, um, some crazy level uh, over, over leveling in certain classes. Mostly we've seen actually season seven be pretty good. <laughs> yeah. It really depends on how teams want to play their support. Yeah. Uh, you might see a more spiked uh, so level. So Fire Giant got buffed mage. if you get Sometimes it. Jungler apparently. Too, mm -hmm. um, Fire Giant buff got a buff. Plays. But so far, it's been really good. We've been seeing some more high-level play. People have been resting. I'm going to do that to you yeah, guys. It's really good. So XP feels good on the map. The, the pacing of the map feels good. We just want to make sure this Alpha Harpy feels like it's worth killing. Yeah, yeah. a little bit more XP on that duo lane side of the map now. Uh, on to items. Let's talk about Vision Shard. Uh, a couple changes coming to Vision it's gonna Shard. It's going to flash. A lot of community requested changes that are coming to Vision of Shard. Of course. Yeah. Uh, upgrading the Relic Vision Shard. Now no longer Yay, resets for cooldown. Yeah, I, I cried about that. Fired relic. Correct. Okay, so they watch my stream. We've added a reminder for Let's go. upgrading Vision Shard Let's to go. a new relic Let's after go. reaching level two. Two reminders actually. Let's yeah. go, it will baby. Flash white, yes. kind of like your rank up, your ability rank up reminder, but even faster. So you really notice it. And if you would, if you leave the fountain without upgrading it, you'll get the little relic warning. Yeah, have you ever been like 20 minutes, the 30 minutes of the game, you're fighting, your team wipes, you hit tab, and you just see vision shards that yep. your whole team is I have finished the whole game without my fucking second eye to bond. Come on, man. Something is so much better than having nothing like it sure. was before, right. but it's not going to be nearly as difficult to remember that. But and I'm clumsy. As the, as the community gets used to it, you'll see, we'll see yeah. that go down. We'll see a steep drop up, and we'll see more that gradually go down. So obviously oh that was very high priority for gosh. us. Made sure that's in this patch. It's very important. All right. Before we get into traditional item balance, I know you guys wanted to take just a little bit of time and talk so about. So clumsy, can you tell us what happened to Fire Giant? Update. I know there's a lot of community <laughs> or they just not saying based on like jungler nerfs and transcendence. We talked about it for three minutes, but never got told what the actual change was. Why we decided to mm -hmm. steer away from nerfing transcendence and Heartseeker. So really, what it comes down to is when we launched season seven and we made our PTS adjustments. We saw a lot of people trying to figure out. Oh, so uh, does Phoenixes have less protection when you get Fire Giant buff? Are, are they potentially maybe too weak now because of specific counter items? Maybe maybe the Vision Relic uh, causes junglers to slow down a little bit. How do mages feel after all these changes? Um, and again, whenever we touch items, especially as much as we did in Season 7, they are wide-reaching. They affect every god that can purchase them. So rather than being a bit too quick on, on, on jumping on these items, we want to let people kind of resolve the meta somewhat. But they didn't tell us numbers. Feel, figure out how each roll strength feels. Um, junglers, for example, also have the added concern of if we nerf Transcendence, that indirectly nerfs Hunters, and we want to make sure that balance is preserved. So we just want to let things kind of resolve. Oh, you those fucking nerf Transcendence Pond? And Clumsy's going to feel my wrath. There's a couple key things here that I'd like to add, though. One is... We don't want to take season six feedback and apply it to season seven. Right. Right? A lot of those nerfs people were asking about because of what, the literally the core jungle build now is transcendence. Season, a lot of so if you nerf transcendence, you so are nerfing, fucking junglers so uh, hard for no reason. Makes a lot of sense. It, uh, it was a reasonable suggestion at the end of season mm -hmm. six. We didn't do it though because we knew a bunch of changes were coming with season seven. Season seven launches. Pe people think junglers might be a little more fire giant effect of battle protection from fifty to seventy. Oh, nice! Now that people feel like they're underpowered. Yeah. Okay. So we want to one see if that season six feedback actually translates to season seven, or I feel like that's not going to have as and then it's going to be an effect, sure but it's going to be hard to go into a phoenix. Impactful. That's our number one priority. Yeah. Make sure every role on the conquest map has something to do, has something important to do, can, and can change the game. So. Nerfing a, a strong item might be a reasonable change, but if that class already feels a little under, or role might feels a little underpowered, we don't want to nerf, even if it's their, clearly their strongest item, we wouldn't want to nerf it. So we're going to take a little bit more time. A Mage Boots is the other one that comes yeah. up a lot. So no Transcendence, no Heart Seeker, no Mage Boots in 7-2, but it's definitely going to be something we keep an eye on, something we Do look nerf forward to. Do Nerf Transcendence, Fawn. You better reduce yeah. the cost of fucking mazes. Obviously, 
community perception and the actual data Make we're seeing are not exactly Make Mesa 650 at rank 1, right that's fine. And so we have to give people some time to really feel If they that, nerf trends, they so have to down. fucking you know, are doing make Mesa 650 at rank 1. So you can start with Elpha and Hog. <laughs> it's early. People are experimenting. Have to. A lot of times, we saw um, a lot of changes in the map. Which would be fine with me. I fucking hate experimenting and learning yeah. new things. We feel like so. We really want to make sure we we pay attention. Clumsy, if you're here, don't over. Remember over that idea. Yeah, yeah, keep sending, you go to nerf uh, transcendence. Back our way, guys. We'll be sure to you know keep our eyes. No, they're gonna nerf uh, going transcendence next item, patch. Hand of the gods. This is more of a quality of life feels good change uh, rather than a balance change. Uh, we fixed an issue where this consumable was always instant cast. Now it's gonna follow the, got worse. the rules of what your casting option is set to. Right. Yep. I'm sure a few people will have gotten used to the instant cast yeah. and will be upset about this change, but I'm sorry. Cool. This right. is, feels like the right way to do it. Yes. Next up, Spectral Armor. This item, you know, hasn't been getting really picked up a lot, so we've been making some changes to it. Right, I'll uh, buff it because they're buff crit. 200 health, 300 Wait, mana, what? 10 MP5. What's going on with Spectral Armor? So we just did a little shift in the protections, but we gave, the big thing is we gave it a bunch of health. Yeah, we converted the uh, crowd control reduction to 200 health. We both yeah, crit. we have we that, that idea. Okay. It hasn't been popular in Smite for uh -huh. a while. It was kind of popular in the early season six, but yeah. we might have overdone it, and everyone kind of feedback cost us to over nerf it right uh -huh. away again. So oh, they added health to this. I'm like, what the fuck are they doing? Counter, right. Counterplay evolved. Most people were saying the Spectral Armor just really did not feel like a usable item, even in a crit meta. Yeah. So what we did was we took uh, notes from the Contagion item, which is also in this tree, but does have some health. These, oh, they're this tree it. still has higher <clears throat> physical protection and less health than the uh, Iron Male tree. Yeah. So we think it's still consistent to our design goals, but we hope that this item now feels like it's an, actually an option. To pick <laughs> Dude, up they're going to add CDR, uh, and they're going to make it 90% yeah. reduction yeah. on crit. Lots of Watch. hunters have been talking about going crit, and we're moving right on to gods, and our first god getting changed is a hunter. I'm losing Cobb. We're actually reverting a pass change to Hive, increasing the attack speed buff that uh, uh, players get from this uh, ability. Yes, yeah, so we're about to go through. We did all okay. the meta nerfs yeah. like at, ahead of time, and we know people are excited for those. So actually, a lot of the 7-2 uh, launch patch will be actually a lot of buffs yeah. to gods you maybe haven't seen so much lately. Yeah. There's still a few extra meta nerfs in here, yeah. too. But there's a lot of buffs. And Amusing Cobb was one of the first ones. He went through oh, crazy up and ups and downs over the last couple of metas, right? Yeah, sometimes he's like the dominant hunter pick. And was other that times... end of season five that he was like the pick? Nem yeah, because I mean, he had Probably. the wave pressure. You could do a lot with 2% right? more scaling so on the So he's dropped down a little bit now. So we're just reverting this change, giving him that late game attack speed back to his hives. We use that mechanic well. It feels really good. Yeah. And he is meant to be that, that auto cannon. So we want to make sure he can do that. All right, next up, Bastet getting another change in the major update release. In Snaring Claw, cats will now take five hits from minions before losing a hit point, and we also fixed a description error where it listed a one-second root rather than a 0.5-second root. Yeah, so this is kind of a nice quality of life. It is a buff. It is a buff. Also, it is a buff. We also have a fix besides that, but in this case, like, you throw your cats at a jungle camp, or you throw your cats at a minion wave, yeah, and then, like, that. before <laughs> you really even see them deal damage, they just kind of <clears> fall over and die. Um, we have another example of this in the game where we have Calder who actually takes mitigated damage from minion hits, so that doesn't happen. We're just taking that tech, moving it over to boss deck cat. So they will still die very quickly to a volley of archer shots, but it won't be instantaneous. Right, right. And I know a big point. We're never going to buff Arachne. Arachne is a high win rate. And fuck buffing Kepri. Never talk right. to me so again. So letting them get shredded by minions instantly was just strange. It looked, it just looked like people thought it was bugged and things like that. So right. I think this yep. is going to be a big, uh, big quality of life improvement, it, although it is a buff. She's got that damage scaling nerf. To balance it out. Yep. That's, that's, bu right, that's a quality up, of life buff for camp clearing and after our nerf came through. Uh, recently come back into the meta after the major Kama. changes in Let's the go. last update. Uh, we've got Essence Drinker. We are decreasing the passive buff from 8% back to 6%. And Vampire Bats decreasing the buff per stack from 4% to 3%. Yeah. And these are actually reverts of the buff that he got recently. So we did yeah, two changes. One was increase sustain and the other was increase the leap range. And just seeing what Camazots is able to do with that increased leap range, uh, getting over walls you previously couldn't before, closing distance you couldn't previously before. Chasing people yeah, down. Yep. Chasing people down. You have the slow to follow up after the leap. Those kind of things really allowed him to be more effective um, to the point where he probably doesn't need the extra sustain on top of that. Right. Yeah, so we're getting a lot of, especially pro feedback. <laughs> He's, this, this guy has become a top pick in the yeah. high-ranking solo laner meta. Yeah. So they were a little just concerned about his sustain just being cool. kind of over the top. Right. He is defined by his sustain. He's kind of a vampire bat. It's his thing. But when we buffed him, it looks like there was a little bit all at once. So we're reverting those two, keeping the leap. We expect him to still be most likely a top contender in the solo lane going forward for a little yep. while, though. 
Right. So yeah, high sustain plus high mobility, maybe a little bit too much. So bring back the sustain a little bit. Right. Moving right Crazy, along, we've got Kuku Khan, yes. Whirlwind. We are decreasing, decreasing the damage per tick, and Zephyr. We are actually decreasing the slow percent. Right. This. Th so, this might look a little change, strange. Boys. Now we've we've nerfed him almost more than you. We buffed him. Every yeah, OP we, god we, we is getting a nerf right now. Meta with a few changes. But those changes that we made to him All involving Whirlwind and the way it hits and applies, similar situation as Kamazots, I guess. Yeah. Really impactful. He doesn't need this much damage and this much control on his other abilities now that we've balanced that out. I think it's a better place for the god overall. He feels more responsive. He feels more impactful. Yeah. Uh, you don't stand in an area for this weirdly long time and have nothing apply like the kind of old Kukukan Khan does. Yeah. But we need to take that damage down to, to compensate because the god is performing incredibly well, even yeah. at... Very high levels, right, and Bond? He still has, yeah, and he still has his late game extra scaling tick that he got, but this brings down the initial wave clear and right. the safety that he has, the the poke that he just gets early on, and just like the base damage when he hasn't built as much power yet. Um, Gugu is so strong, dude. Controlling the laning phase, controlling zoning. If you it's funny though, Gugu's too is like really, one of the really best abilities the in the damage. game. This just brings it to a more manageable level. Right, cool. All right, next up, Kumba Karna. Epic uppercut. We're decreasing the damage on that bad boy. Yeah. <laughs> it was way too much. It's, it's, Wait, what? Uh, truly, that uppercut. But this god, he, he's known for his lockdown, and he is actually a very high damage guardian. Yeah. And this, I guess, this he's been the might same be forever. For people, but we've been following his stats. Where did this come from? In the high ranking meta, mm -hmm. is is way up there. What? He's probably <laughs> Where the most contested guardian. From? Yeah. If you misplay around level five, when when he hits level five, it's really easy just to be immediately deleted. I agree. Really it's a lot of damage, but where it. the fuck um, is this coming from? And the amazing control that he brings to team fights. So. so just tweaking that ultimate, I think that's going to feel a lot like a lot more counterplay is available there. Cool. All right. Next up, Naja, Universe Ring Toss. We're decreasing the protections debuff per Again? hit. Again? And Windfire Wheels. We're decreasing the damage per hit and oh also my increasing God. the physical power scaling per hit. Well, I so hate Naja, so I'm okay with these nerfs. Fuck Naja, dude. To be... Uh, true damage that scales off physical power. They're trying healing. to make it so being um, a support Naja is shit. Targeted towards reducing the effectiveness of support Saket. And people went, well, what about support Naja? Right. So this is our, our change should basically mirror that for Naja. So you'll see Naja uh, has decreased protection shred, which means that Naja can't really just immediately like get a good ring bounce at level one, level two, and like control the wave. Um, so that's a really big hit there. But also Windfire Wheels, the base damage on it, even when no power was built could just really really hurt you while you're up in the air so we're decreasing that but giving some additional scaling so that if you are building assassin naja you can still do a lot of damage to your target especially once you have crit online if you get right. death finger to augment it you can still deal that damage just if you haven't built that damage you're building as a support you're building more tanky you won't do quite as much and similarly these are two circuit you will need to build a pretty considerable amount of power to deal more damage yeah, with this, with these changes. I believe it was around 300. Was Did like, you count that with the crits? Yeah, well, cr the crit math ended up working out the same. Okay, okay. So, still, you, you see this is a little increase, but this is just like Circuit. And a lot of people with Circuit, they thought we might have buffed her. Right. But really, no, you have to build a lot dick. of power before this is a buff scenario. Yeah, and so we wanted yeah. to make that Naja <clears throat> support a little less frustrating, because yeah. it is pretty intense. Encouraging the full damage build rather than the hybrid support type of build. Yeah. Right. That's right. a lot of changes, Nike bro. Next up. Valiant Leap, we are no. decreasing the cooldown by two seconds. You know, Nike. Nike was kind of all the rage when we announced a rework and revealed it, and then she kind of fell off sucked. a little bit. Well, the thing with Nike is her old passive, or her passive before we nerfed it, yeah. was causing a lot of problems. And now we can buff her safely. Yeah. And that's what we're going to do. And yeah. I mentioned that in 7-1, and we saw a pretty good increase for her in 7-1, mm -hmm. but we want to make sure that the solo laners especially feel like there's Nike a good variety sucks. of characters to pick from. And we Nike think still Nike do -do. is just underrated right now. So we're Underrated. buffing her even a little bit more. How about not good? See if we can get that extra bump, get her into the pool of characters that feel viable in that solo lane. Um, and if not, really dig into the player data and the feedback to find what else she needs to get there. Yep. Cool. All right. Awesome. Raijin next up. Percussive Storm. We're increasing the damage from 25 to 85 to 30 to 90 for shot. This is actually a revert from a past change as well. Yeah, he, he was kind of known for his ability to just control the mid wave. And uh, that was one thing that we took away so that he had more more counterplay options available to him. But a lot has changed since then. Mage damage has changed since then. I wonder then. if that's enough uh, to clear early. Mage ability has changed a lot since then. Um, and we're just seeing Raijin kind of on the lower end of mages right now. So reverting this will give back some of his old strength, help him compete within the pool of mages. Nice. All right, we've got set up next. Uh, we are increasing his basic attack power from 37 to 39, and then Skewer, we are increasing the damage. What? So set buff might look a little bit weird to some people, 
um because we've been nerfing him a lot recently uh mm. but that's largely due to he's a very God high skill damn. You have to be very 20 good damage set. late and a lot game of our we're targeting that top end to get him more into it, a reasonable state and we feel like we finally got there set is still picked still used but he's nowhere near on the top ban register he's just more fair to fight in general and so now that we've gotten that Five, top end of player 10, kind of more 15, into a reasonable 20. spot we're looking at buffing his core ability so all players can play set more useful or it more would duck you to steal general. more fire so his general stats we gave him some more extra basic attack power that way just his general damage his ability to clear goes up as well as skewer the main center hit so this is not the clone damage if you can just land that skill shot you're going to be doing a bit more damage your clear will go up and so that should hopefully balance out the players who might not be as skilled with set as well as allow the top end set players to still really shine with the character it really made us sad when even the pro players weren't playing set anymore yeah. because that's where he thrives and he he is hard to play so we want to make sure that he stays a, a viable option cool all right second to last we're getting towards the bottom of the list here vamana we are buffing the big baby with some uh <laughs> some love to colossal fury here yeah this is a cool one because we're really trying to make Vamana holy play fuck more aggressively and yeah. and make sure he has real impact a lot of times people are incentivized just to use they're doubling the shield away. almost yeah. we don't think that's that exciting we are increasing the survivability of it a little bit here giving it's not some, massive some but like tick, but also we're giving him a new component which we think is very exciting um which is as he deals damage to enemies in his ultimate, he'll gain a stacking <laughs> movement speed buff. Why? This is really to encourage you to just what chase them down and just keep you? bashing on people, right? Yeah, we've we've seen over the course of Spice history what happens when we give like if we gave him on like. Why are you example, giving him Vitalis? This is more of a skillful component. You have to actually get in on someone and land successful what? hits, and we have opportunity to close the distance and have that buff fall off. So this should give him on a reward for Did being just aggressive. Add something like this to the ultimate. He's just not on top of you, hitting you for free. We were also very hesitant to buff the rest of his kit because that's been done in the past. <laughs> yeah, and he was a very strong. No, I'm gonna play him. Early Absolutely, when he comes out, that or maybe end of season five. Yeah, we did some adjustments, and he he spiked. Bro, early game Vamana yeah, when you ult feels like shit as a jungler. Him, so that's now it shouldn't feel like shit as long as you can get one auto off. To a longer cooldown, there's a very good set of counterplay you can still do to this ultimate to get away from it, um, to kill him through it, build anti heal things like yeah. that, and. This should allow him to have this cool, new, fun component, but not be frustrating to play against in the lane. All right, and our last update for balance for 7.2, Shibalanke. We've got Branching Bola, increasing the damage on the Bola, and Darkest of Night seeing a cooldown decre decrease. So the Branching Bola, that's bonus damage on just the branches, not the actual yes. hit, because that would be pretty scary. And Darkest of Night, so this is a fun one because you so remember the, faster, the community and debate. And he's part of team fights more often. Stun. Make that, an stop, that little stutter step yeah. stun, removing that, would that make an impact or not? A lot of people that were rarely good at the game, played against X-Ball before, yep. are pretty easy to stutter step and dodge that. So they yeah. were like, ah, oh, this doesn't even do anything. Well, it did. It had yeah. pretty big stat impact across, across the board, even at high levels. You've Told seen you. now pros just run right through that blindness. They're still able to play through it. We think that's really cool. I yeah, literally was saying that from the rip. I was like, yeah, this is going to make Shiblaki a shit. And everyone's like, no. Especially our newer players. No, it's not. not. It. So we're bringing Shiblaki some buffs is still gonna be great. to bring this god up from that change, which actually was a pretty significant nerf in the end. Yeah, and so Branchy Polo, the extra damage will... Why are you adding you me, bro? Hits ...and people being grouped up, as well as your clear. And not only that, Darkest of Night being on 90 seconds, it previously brought so much to the table with that stutter step. Even, like, if you were a good player and could do it, if you had to leap at the last second because a Kraken was underneath you, right. you, you had to choose, do I take the Kraken or use it, uh, my relative... 15% movement speed that early in the game, like, first ult, which is when I think it's going to be super impactful, is going to be huge. It's potent of a team fight ability. It doesn't need the 110 second cooldown anymore. I'm excited about the Branching Polo one, really, because... Yeah. I don't know if that I mean, you're going to see more of a mana. I don't know how good it's going to end up being in the hit. meta because of clear and Which shit like that. Really cool but when we find kind of potential. We, kind of, we were talking about this. Yeah. And that should help his lane clear a little bit. That'll help his poke in lane. Because you tend to get hit by that a little coincidentally a lot right. when laning against yeah. him. So I think this is going to be really good for him. All right, well, that kind of wraps it up for 7.2. And before we get into the rest of the show, we want to just take a bit to kind of remind you guys, I know there's a lot of changes, we talked about them at the top of the show, of kind of our new update release cycle. So right now, we're in week two on Wednesday. We're talking about the Ascendant Warrior update show. PTS is going to come up Friday and be available for testing all weekend for you guys. The next week on Tuesday, we've got new content, Valentine's Day Chess, Chibi Ymir, plus the bonus balance we talked bonus about. Bonus balance. So Thor nerfs, Yemoja nerfs, Bastet nerfs, 
Odin nerfs coming your way next week. And then we've got week four, which is kind of an off week. And then we repeat the cycle. Uh, and we're expecting the Ascendant Warrior update to release February 25th. And then we'll just get right back to it. But now it's time to break down some bug fixes and some Project Olympus stuff. And for that, I've got AJ still with me, but I've also got Titan Fish with me from the design team. How you doing, man? Doing great. It's great to be here. The Mulan's not going to come out for 20 days. Awesome. So uh, for the first up, we've just got a small bug fix that's already actually fixed in live. Victory chest and battle chest, they were giving out the wrong reward, so we fixed that. So if you got the chest, you've been saving them, you can go ahead and open them and you'll get the right reward. But now for the big thing, uh, it's been a long time community request. Big Project Olympus feature that we've been working on, eSports and live streams hub. Fish, what's going on with that? That's right. So it has been requested highly from the community, and we're really happy to, to finally bring it out. Um, what it's going to do is both encourage players, especially newer players who aren't as familiar with our thriving eSports scene, to watch um, on Twitch and Mixer on our official stream our eSports matches, our SPL matches, our other community streams that also go on that stream, and also reward them for watching. You're going to get these viewer points that you can use on some exclusive skins to this and some old skins that we're bringing back. I hate back viewer points, dude. It's going to be really exciting. Awesome. So your points viewer. are the stupidest how, how fucking thing points? ever. Excellent question. So what you need to do is make sure you go onto our high res web page and link your account. I'm just redoing mixer, mixer points, Twitch, man. Your one will work. How did um, mixer points go? You'll view the streams. Like shit. And as long as you log in fight once per week, you'll be getting points for viewing. We also have SPL match voting in there that you can get points from. Very if you had exciting. Leftover points from our mixer points. We're going to be rolling those over into this one to one. So those will. I'm glad they're bringing voting back to these new viewer points as well. And I don't like viewer um, points. And then like, if you try a different the fucking class, platform because this hasn't been successful and if you want yet. To even faster, we have an extra option. Um, we have this viewer pass that you can buy, and that will double both the points you can earn for viewing per week and the rate at which you earn those points. So everyone can earn points. Just have to link and watch. If you buy the pass, you get bonus points for the whole year. It's just just one one small purchase for that, and it comes with a skin. That's right, a it's, really cool skin. Yeah, that we'll be so we'll about. be We're showing off. We're actually going to talk about some of the skins here in just a second. Yeah. Right, we'll be showing off some of the skins, but this is crazy. We're getting match voting is coming back. There's a couple rules changes to the max voting, a match voting, the way not exactly done the way we did before. A couple sure. quality of life changes, a couple updates. So we're really excited for everyone to get in there and see all those changes, mm -hmm. and we're making sure that you can watch any type of stream as long as it's one of our official channels and we'll be keeping in mind as we try to expand this system throughout the year see what we can do for now it's just going to be kicking off on actual official smite channel on twitch and mixer only that's right but there's always potential for expansion here and i'm just so excited to get a whole new set of people to watch smite esports because it's so fun yeah. to watch it's not going to bring in a new exist. set of people right, right? yeah it's awesome this and it's is a great like way to learn be... smite especially if you're a beginner it's fantastic <sighs> we're going to have a page with a breakdown of all the pros te pro teams too and um, you'll be able to get what wards and avatars. That's right. That from the also, um, that it'll those, definitely those keep people's attention, which is good. This is something that should have been in the game a while ago. There's but ways to learn about the uh, the watching the stream shit isn't going to do what I wanted to combine, do. All in the game now. Yes. So this is your one-stop shop for esports live streams. Yeah. You want to vote on matches? You can do that. And we've also got, as Fish mentioned, we've got the viewer pass that actually boosts your viewer point gain. And the the skin that you get that uh, with that viewer pass is Infinite Duality Agni, and it is absolutely yeah. amazing. I was looking at that card oh, yeah. earlier today. Mm -hmm. Looks so nuts. This is a, a take on our. Uh, be actually become a fan favorite theme with the uh, infinites and the That's illuminators right. and stuff like that. Oh, now that is a beefy. It a whole new level. Oh, yeah. it's like the so uh, it's just the like Aposh skin, right? right? Down the middle. And I think we're just the about ready skin? to go in game. Yes, kind just of. Look at those effects. It's Damn, just son, look at those really autos. Love, love, ever since the first, yo, that's you know, beautiful. Skin on this Holy line, fuck! The team kind of discovered this prismatic type of effect. Uh, at the okay, of season six, that, so this been, skin's gonna be competitively banned, bro. Continue to develop this. You can't see the one details in the shards that drift up. Actually, you the might be able to see it in different like areas. You bring in different parts I have a feeling people are going to complain about this skin. Like it's oh, yeah. very clean, very crisp. That's beautiful, yeah, so though. I know with the past, like, infinite skins, they were very much, like, rainbowy. They had, like, the, the swirling effects in the background. This one almost has, like, an almost angelic take to it. Mm -hmm. A little bit, yeah. So you'll get you cannot see this old either. Points ah. To earn lots of other skins if you pick this up it's a nice at the beginning skin, though. of the year or any time you want. Actually, All once, yeah, and that's another purchase. thing to hit on. We I just want to play Agni. It. The viewer pass is a one-time purchase for the entire year. Yeah, 400 gems, you get this skin, plus double viewer points when you watch official streams. And so in the store, you're going to be able to earn 
there's going to be one skin at the beginning that you could, that's brand new that we're about to show that you'll be able to earn through viewer points. There will also be rotating exclusive skins from Smite history. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, that that's one cool. that you can earn, that's not the only one. There'll be more coming. So there'll okay. be three that you can buy with points that'll release throughout the year. And then one bonus skin that you don't even have to spend your points on. You just have to earn enough points to get that one. And that we'll be re uh, revealing those in future updates. But for the launch, you're going to have the Agni skin, which you get with the viewer pass. There's going to be the, the, the store skin, which we're going to go look at yeah, next. If it's 400 gems, and, there's gonna be and you're going to watch cool. SPL, yeah, you should, awesome. you should definitely get the best. The Agni looking fantastic. Uh, let's go ahead and take a listen to the voice. The pass. skin's nice. I mean, it's a 400 gem skin. Kind of crazy. Bear witness to a force, the likes of which none has ever seen. I'm an unstoppable force. Nice, Infinite Duality Agni. That is going to be your first skin for buying the viewer pass for the new esports and live streams hub. And uh, that's not the only skin for the esports and live stream hub that we have to talk about. That's right. Oh no, we've got a big one coming this up. This is right? a long time community requested. <laughs> you guys probably saw a little bit of a preview when yep. we pulled up that UI graphic, but we've got the Dunk Father, the Dunk Odin Father. looking. Oh, I was so I was wondering clean. what <laughs> fucking that got, was, dude. Hey, just serving people on the court. <laughs> just look at that. Idly, so this is boys. Be in the viewer store, so you know you'll be able hey, to earn enough points. All to, I'm saying is they buff out and then only gets a skin, bro. If you watch <laughs> SPL throughout the whole year and participate in the voting, you'll all be able I'm to saying. get the skin. And really, we wanted this skin for the the first one in the viewer store to have a bit of a community. Right. Spin <laughs> we really wanted that. We wanted to get hey, All I'm saying is it's a business so strategy. I like it. The Dunk Father. Which, of course, he's described as oh the Oh my gosh! <laughs> okay, that's beautiful. <laughs> Holy shit! And now you can finally dunk on Now Odin's gonna Hardy actually wanna play. Been Welcome to the gym, you right? have been. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that's fucking Odin sick. Space Jam 2, come on. We oh, can get him in goodness. there. This is so good. And like AJ was saying, long time community requested. Oh, that's he throws fucking the ball, sick. He throws a basketball. The only complaint is that they use dope. orange. Looks like Somebody wears the orange in basketball. Uh, in the art team, as you'll see, you'll see always on the on the update show a couple in progress art assets. So. Right. Oh nice. shit! Oh, okay, that's He's perfect. Got a court, a cage match for <laughs> real. Right? Yeah, that's some street ball right there. Yeah, as you see, we kind of took a little bit more that's of a sick. street ball approach for his his design as opposed to a true pro jersey. Sure. Uh, which I really like how the art team. I think it turned out very well. Yeah, this yeah, is the sick. The card art is amazing, and this also has. <laughs> Bro, it all just fucking awesome. Look at the basketball. Which is a special email. Exactly, yeah, we've got a VXG on this one. Nice. Like, He's got the handle. <laughs> how could we no! not have this? No, fuck away, I didn't think know, they were going to let it move. So now you can Bro! just be balling up and down. Oh right? my god. <laughs> so yeah, okay, yeah, by the skin. skin. Available in the viewer store. Bro, I didn't think you were going to be able time. to move. I've been dunking on amateurs since the beginning of time. Before the existence of That's Thor. That's sick. And your mother. <laughs> <laughs> Straight out of Asgard. Uh, okay. You guys are staring at a winner. Nice. We kind of the the voice direction for this was as if actual Odin himself in Smite was actually just playing beating ball, beating right, just you playing down basketball, on the, on the court. Yeah. serving people on the court. Yeah, that's well, it. Thanks like so that's much good. for breaking down the new <clears throat> esports and live stream hub. That wraps it up for our uh, Project Olympus and Bug Fixes section. Uh, we're going to go ahead and throw it over to Cupcake and Auburn for some esports and community news. Hi, I'm Titan Cupcake, and this is Titan Avi, and we're here to talk to you about some community and esports news. But before we get started, I wanted to say welcome to all of the 2020 and Season 7 Olympians. We've got Wraithen, we've got Black Eye, we've got Kitten of Doom, uh, we've got Imogen, Fat Requiem, Alpha Jackal, Izanami, Savvy Soar, and Kerr McHale. So congratulations. There's a giant Thank tree on Duo Land side. And we're excited to see what kinds of things we can bring to Smite this year. Very um, but, excited to have them. Yes, it's very exciting. Um, yeah. Our second round, we know that last year a lot went into it and they really helped bring a lot of issues to the light. So yeah. Rip me, rip me, rip me. They made it a lot easier for us as community managers too. Yes. Have a small Bro, some dumbasses thought I was an Olympian. <laughs> They were lovely, Fucking very idiots. helpful people, yeah. and we have some returning ones, so very excited about it. Yeah, I have time um, for that shit. things that are happening in the community right now, we have the Smite birthday submission form. So um, we are taking all submissions for jump stamps and avatars for our birthday. Um, we appreciate everybody who's been supporting that already. Um, if you want to submit, go ahead and make sure you do that by February 21st, and you can find out all the details on our blog at smitegame.com. And then we also have a new Smite content block that's gonna be happening every Wednesday. So every Wednesday we will be having 
different shows taking place throughout the day that and the update show will be taking place at three like usual but we'll also have let's learn smite art shows a smite showcase five four three two one smite so you can have a day filled with smite content um, so you can come view hang out um, but you could also be earning your viewer points towards your esports and, and live streams hub. I'm so excited about the viewer points yes. in the esports tab. But in-game voting is back off. Oh, it's going to be things. such a good year. It's going to be such a good season. What else is going on for esports? Oh, we have so much stuff going on in esports. So we have the SEC qualifiers kicking off on February 8th. So if you think you have what it takes to compete in our amateur league, you should grab a team, sign up uh, this Saturday. And we're going to be start broadcasting those on February 14th. So if you want to fall in love with my <laughs> esports all over again, that is the time to do it. Um, a little bit later, towards mid-March, we're also going to be kicking off the Open Circuit. It is our entry-level league, um, kind of like the Smite Combine last year, but it does look a little bit different. So if you're interested in competing, look out for more details about that in mid-March. And we finally have the SPL coming back. <laughs> March 14th will be our first broadcast day, and we are so, so, so excited. 14th? Yeah. Bro. The eSports tab and the viewer point store. Our team doesn't even have their visas yet. Hey, what the fuck? There's a lot fuck? of ways to get involved and oh, get yeah. rewarded for watching and all oh, kinds yeah. of stuff. <laughs> it's going to be a big year. It's going to be a good season. Okay. Hey, well, thank you so much. I appreciate okay. it. And let's go back to the couch with Isaiah. We're going to have no scrims so before SPL starts. All those exciting community and eSports news updates, but it's time to break down some skins. <laughs> You've got three skins coming your way from the next J Corruption section of the event. And here to break them down with me, I've got Titan Tina and Titan Cinnamons. You guys are no strangers to the couch. How are you guys doing today? Cinnamons. Very well. Thank yeah. you. Awesome. Thank you, Isaiah. Awesome. It's yeah. good seeing you, yeah, too. Yeah, good seeing you, too. Yeah. So you guys excited to show off some skins here? Oh, oh hell, hell yeah. yeah. Awesome. So I know you guys have been Thanks. putting in a ton of work behind the scenes. Jade Corruption is starting up next week mm -hmm. for the people mm -hmm. that haven't uh, heard of the event. It's mm -hmm. our brand new Chinese event that's kind of leading up to the release of Mulan. Yeah. We've got a bundle with Bacchus and Olerun coming out next week on the 11th. But we're here to show off the next section of the event. Uh, with lots of awesome skins. And we're actually going to tease the final reward skin from the event today, too. What is it? Guys, we got we to gotta wait till we get there. <laughs> <laughs> so Jump first the up, I'm super excited. We've got uh, Jade Dragon <laughs> Set is our first one that Porkies. we're going to be showing off here. Oh, and this, this is so cool. I was really, really wanting like a super badass set skin because this yeah, That's a fucking cool, cool skin. The Unicrum one, but I, I don't really even know what it's the only thing in game. I just like the colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, All right, the colors aren't as bright in game, game, but that's a, such a better exactly, skin yeah. than that and fucking rainbow garbage, kind of, bro. You know, not the one the looks Chinese good. Chinese pantheon. This is like our Chinese themed. Skin yeah, I like this. In the Chinese event, we, we did know, a good job. We normally try and get you know at least. I one like the green skin in the guys with yellow event. fucking yes. lines. Uh, look at the those contrast clothes. is good. Oh, they're all jade. That guy's dead. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's oh. done. He, oh wait, nope. Ah. <laughs> Uh, and then look at the trails on the skewer. They look really awesome. Yeah, I like the trails, on it, and that's pretty cool too. I like that little rotating dust storm. Yeah, and this green color looking yeah, absolutely green's my favorite, amazing. So every, hey, every all I'm saying is, is green, say got a buff, and then say got a cool skin. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Hey, and they, they did a really hey, good job kind of giving off like the kind of almost evil feel with the effects. All I'm saying is, either you guys got some really yeah, crazy coincidence awesome. going on, or there's a there's something else going on here. Cool. The agenda's so got some shit going on. Abilities. Let's go ahead and take a <laughs> listen to the voice back for Jade Dragon Set. The unjust will be punished. My justice is swift and full of fury. The shadows will not protect you. Nice. Yeah, that's yeah, Jade that's Dragon. Uh, no pattern. So deep, so, so condescending yeah. almost, right? Looking yeah. really awesome. That's going to be coming your way. And then the next skin is a part of the bundle for mm -hmm. the Jade Corruption event. Oh, this one yep. I'm looking really forward to. Iron Conqueror Hera. <gasps> this skin looks absolutely amazing. Just look at Hera there. Oh my god. What goodness. do you mean, it's Clumsy? You make a skin feet. every day. Oh Come on, dude. <laughs> Tina, please. I'm just going to say it, dude. Just gonna Thanks for saying what we were all thinking, though. That's good. Yeah. 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 It's a cool skin. You're welcome. It's okay. Nice. I like it's Hera. Effects. It's hard yeah, to make Hera look cool. really clean. I really love the oranges and the blues. Wait, didn't Hera just get the oh, fucking, yeah. what's it called skin? The rat skin? It's the Argus. Nice. Oh, big boy. What cool. is he? Oh, I see. see I see what high res right? is doing. Yeah. So Chris, They're trying to throw us off their scent by putting out three Hera skin skins sure in three months. So they think uh, we, they, yeah, we don't know what's happening in the back end. All right. Like, really I see you, Clumsy. The way it was set up was really weird. But I mean, I think the effects are here really. See what you're doing there. Dope. 
Yeah, it's it looks awesome. Awesome. It's like it's flames, but you get the kind of orange. Hey, nothing's yeah, happening, yeah, bro. You time. guys, and I like what he did with the. Yeah, just doing you. Where it's like the fire in the outside, but the rings coming out. Oh yeah. yeah. Is there a possibility? Hey, it's two skins. Doesn't matter. Recolor. Cool. Yeah. So let's see if we can camera rope. Just we kind of see because we changed hair up a whole yes. lot in this skin. Definitely want to show off. Oh shit. She looks really she cool from the front. Battle guys. Eye milk? patch. True. Yeah. yeah. Looks absolutely amazing. And just the details on the armor. It looks yeah, really, pretty really badass. Sick. Stuff. Oh, I like the little. Yeah, little actually, if the back piece was in there, the I think yeah. I would like the skin a little bit more. Or if it was different. Nice. Recall time. animation. <laughs> oh, good super time. regal. <laughs> All right, that's Iron Conqueror Hera. Let's go ahead and take a listen to the voice back. Argus, obliterate. I expect little resistance. All right, what's this fucking huge Let's tree you guys are quick. talking about? I will only stop once all resistance has been crushed. Nice. Iron oh, Conqueror yeah, Hera looking so awesome. Can't so wait happy. for that skin to come out in game. But Perfect. we've got the final reward skin from the Jade Corruption event. We've actually got it a little bit early to show off for you guys. This is not going to be coming out in the very first week of the update on February 25th. It's mm -hmm. the final reward of the event. But we just couldn't hold it because no, it's so awesome. It's so awesome. It's so cool. Hydro Machina Poseidon. And wait till you guys see this so card massive. art. Oh, my <gasps> God. What the fuck? God. What? He rides. Bro, I just got bull side in like, skin. You can't I do this to me. In the back, <laughs> yeah. I want it to swing. Well, you guys may see that. I this looks cool in game because the fucking thing wait, 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 looks wait. dope. What? Yeah. Oh, I get it. It's the crack. <laughs> okay, spoiler alert. But yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this skin is looking oh, really? so it's cool. The, oh, and my look at God. The and like the fact what that he is riding fuck? that beast. It's, oh, it's so cool. He's so massive. Oh my goodness, and the effects on the basics. <laughs> oh yeah, I really love that. that's it's a like goddamn crazy red, skin. What the fuck, yeah. look at that. Oh and my god. In there really makes it pop. And the basics, they have the same sort of feel. He looks like fucking the nuts. They're obviously like very different. You compare the two, I, mean, I love that. That was a good, good job. Right, all right, let's oh, take a look at the Kraken. Oh, oh my gosh, so cool. <laughs> I had to do it to I me, dude. I cannot wait to play with this in game. <laughs> it looks so clean. Oh. You know, and I'm not normally one for like the darker themes, but like this is gonna be my new favorite Poseidon skin. Oh yeah? Yeah? Over the fourth oh, yeah. of July? Yeah, yeah. Cool. This, this is awesome. This is yeah. good stuff. Poseidon awesome. buff next match. <laughs> Yo, I'm clumsy. <laughs> All I'm saying is you buff Poseidon the, uh, next uh, match for kind of a conversation. Yeah. Why do I keep calling it a chicken? <laughs> it looks like a chicken to me. Cool, and I'm gonna ask Pawn if we can actually just camera robe to show off the beast uh, that he's riding on, just so players can kind of get a look at how massive it looks. Oh, it's yeah, that thing's claws. fucking yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Holy yes, shit, look at his beard. Hydro Machina Poseidon. This is, like I said, the final reward from the Jade Corruption. That's not going to be out in the next patch. Skin. Let's go ahead and take a listen to the voice pack. The immortal Kraken engine. I refuse to dwell in the depths any longer. We shall rise up and take back what is ours. This is our territory now. Full skin. Nice. Okay. Hydro Machina mm. Poseidon. Ever play really Overwatch? Yeah, I actually played Overwatch when it first came out with Last. I just realized uh, it has a tail. With Lassus. So I love tails. And Moon Moon. Oh, I guess it counts, right? Yeah. It? yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, that wraps it up for all the skins in the Jade Corruption event. What, what's you guys' favorite that we looked at? Hera. Hera was dope. I will go with Poseidon. Nice. Yeah, yeah, Poseidon's definitely my favorite, too. Well, that wraps it up for the skin segment. We're going to go ahead and get right into it. We're going to be revealing the next goddess coming to smite, Mulan, the Ascendant Warrior. We're so excited. We've been hyping it up on social media. We had a, an, a whole joust tournament leading up to this god. And here to break everything down with me, I've got some awesome people from the Titan Forge team. I've got Titan Ajax from Design. I've got Clumsy. And then I've got Titan Vivian from the 2D concept artist team. How are you guys doing today? Good. Great. Just enjoying this beautiful Mulan art. Look at that. That's the, uh, the recolor. Yes, yes, that is the recolor. Rising hero Mulan, I believe. Very nice. And then that's the masteries. Ooh. Doing a little bit different, just showing you guys all the card art, so that way you guys can get kind of a visual picture of what Mulan's going to look like before awesome. we get ready down to the nitty gritty with the lore and the, the key pillars and stuff. Yeah, so this goddess is something kind of new for us, right? And we are doing something we've never done before with Mulan, which is actually taking this character that was 
uh, a legendary human, you know, something that has been passed down for years, this, this, this story that a lot of people have known, and there's been all sorts of movies and TV and, and uh, books and other types of cultural impact that Milan has had. And in the Smite storyline, we're actually going to make her a goddess. She's actually going to gain the powers of a god in the Smite storyline. That's pretty exciting. Right. Yeah, so make sure you guys are keeping up with your lore. And with Mulan. So that's being not really the... official lore, obviously. Right, that's yeah. Smite lore, you know. <laughs> with the Smite lore, her right? Official Did you say lore, a you know, Disney she was, character? Uh, a young woman. She went, uh, her uh, family could not fight in the war, so she took it upon herself and she disguised herself. Uh, and she fought in the war and she proved that she was extremely skilled and determined and a great leader. And then she retired a hero and took no reward, even though she was offered, offered many. So she's a symbol of hard work and determination and being humble. And as in part of our spoiler plan, we kind of worked in the disguise element to her. So right. we kind of like hid her face. We called her the mysterious warrior mm -hmm. and some of that in the Corrupted Jade event, you're gonna feel that. And then now we're finally ready to reveal High res studios take on Mulan. Yeah, it's awesome. With Mulan being such a storied character, we saw the Carter a little bit earlier. Vivian, what were some things that you Wait, just like? I thought they had were Titan to work in when you were concepting this new goddess. Well, she is really special for me because I am Chinese, and this is a tale that I've had since you know I was a little girl. And you learn about this like in elementary school, and you have like all these variations. So like for me, it was kind of amazing. So it was really a focus on balancing. So like what AJ was saying, she is human. She was not a goddess by birth. She doesn't have like super magical powers like some of the goddess we have. Um, so it's to balance the human aspect as well as the deity, um, as well as the femininity and the masculinity because what she did is she dressed as a man in order to serve in the military. So one of the key elements I really just had to have um, is the fact that she is based on actual military clothing so like her armor is based on existing clothing and as well as incorporating the Chinese textile which mm -hmm. pretty much is like the iconic look for Chinese anything it's always about like the flung robe the silk the embroidery um, all that stuff so that's um, a huge part of her that is so mm -hmm. awesome and I'm ready to see her in game I'm not sure about you guys right <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, let's do so it we've got yeah, yeah. pawn driving things behind the scenes and Pawn, we do this with every update show with the new god. All Go right, and, uh, what we got, boys? The abilities and show her what she's all about. Oh my gosh. What the fuck did I just see? Oh my goodness. So cool. Why there you can pull yourself? She's a dash and a pull? Nice. Agile. I saw a dash in there. Impactful warrior. Looks like a right? Suzano type nice. ability. I'm seeing some. Uh, some stuff going on with the ability icons here, but that kind of some kind of knock up damage. Something that we've never done before. And uh, clumsy, let's kind of go ahead and start breaking things down. Her passive yeah. is called training arc. Training Tell arc. me about training Absolutely. arc. <laughs> so Mulan's got a very interesting gameplay hook where not really incorporated just in the passive, but she uses three different weapons for each one of her abilities. So for her first ability, she's going to be using her sword. For her second ability, she uses her spear. And for her third, she's going to be using her bow. As she uses each one by damaging enemy gods and as well as minions for a lesser amount, she gains skill towards them. So she can actually start gaining different uh, ability enhancements while she gains different. Wait, so is the one of her going automatically, weapons. or is it double? And you we have can to see that in when Pawn's gonna be getting uh, the passive meter right there. You Plus can going automatically. Each different one, and as Mulan continues training, she starts gaining these different ability effects. Nice. So it's almost like a, a, a mini game while you're playing the actual <laughs> game, right? Right, exactly. It's, it's a pretty common game mechanic. You know, people experience this type of thing in MMOs and other uh, games like RPGs. R RPGs the general, more yeah. you use a skill, the better you get at it. Yeah. And this is symbolic of the character exactly. and the kind of the themes of humanity and determination and practice. <laughs> Wait, what? That, and Every 10 seconds you reduce the pull out of a non ultimate ability by two seconds? The sense of this rise to godliness, mm -hmm. divinity, when you play each match. So Mulan not just ranks up her abilities as normal, but she also How many stacks does it matter? Her One? abilities. And then by the end of the match, you feel so powerful and you have all these new skills and new tricks you can do with the kit. It's a really cool thing. And the whole kit is designed to make this system feel really cool. Yep. Nice. So her abilities still have the five normal ranks, but how many skills in her passive per each ability? So there's there? three different evolutions for her base three skills. Cool. Awesome, so let's go ahead and get right into ability one, cross strike. This is the sword skill, right? Yes, exactly. So we're gonna just start from right back at the beginning. Um, cross strike, Mulan swings her sword in a 180 arc from her right, and then another one from right to left. 
hitting everyone inside that area and anyone inside the cone in the middle twice. Oh, oh shit, okay. So it's right and it's left like all the way over, double in the middle. Even more unique skill shot areas and timings. Right? That's cool. Right, as brand new targeter, harder this is and harder. <clears throat> so this is really cool with that up overlapping center area, but still with a large um, bit of space. It's three fucking times. And one thing to note, her passive meter, uh, the switch class function, which we use on the update show, does seem to break that. Um, you can see the sword meter has filled up a little bit, and the spear has like a tiny little bit. Right. When you're playing, you'll see that changing in real time. It feels really good. Uh, unfortunately, we can't show it because we've been switching class all day, so mm -hmm. it does it does break that. But as you can see, Pawn's already gone through two different evolutions. So he's used the ability one cross strike a few times, and the first evolution you get is an attack speed buff. And then once you get to a second point, once you get to a depth is what we're calling it, you get actually a third swing of cross strike. So usually you start with the first two, and then once you get to a depth, you actually get a third uh, strike and a larger cone in front of you. And nice. then finally, once you get the third evolution, you just get a permanent attack speed buff. Permanent? You, you'll see oh, wow, that. nice. Yeah, exactly. You're going to see that uh, theme for all of our abilities. So the first, when you get to skilled, you're going to just get a small enhancement to each one of your abilities. Once you get to the second, you get to a depth. You then make that ability go into a, you know a, little, a bigger. I present permanent attack components. speed, mm -hmm. and you get um, the and third hit. When you get to master, you get some sort of permanent buff just for one fifty-five. Awesome. Oh, we don't know what the scaling the is. Armor, it has a lot of historic inspiration. So do her weapons. This one designed around the straight sword. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anything you'd like to add about the visuals there? Yeah, we focus on the northern way armor and the. Oh, it's twenty-five percent attack speed on use, so um, it's thirty percent attack speed like, max rank. Oh, we we'll use it. Information on that, unfortunately, because it's such a long time ago, but we tried to stay as much as possible. Is that a cleave? Uh, this sword, though, in particular, is very popular through a or lot of Chinese dynasties. Mm -hmm. it's, so. a, it's a very uh, common shape of sword. Auto right. attack again. So Mulan was that a cleave? That before she moves to her next. Weapon, All right, we got a bungler, boys. Her next ability. Exactly. The bungler on her hands. What's yeah. going on with Spear Thrust, Conti? So Spear Thrust, at, at first, is just a really simple, extremely short-range Spear Attack. Uh, it does a slow on enemies as well, and then once you get it to its first evolution, once you get it to Skilled, it then heals you for up to three targets hit. You see the little level up? Little She gets, like, inside of her skill up, she gets little effects. Mm. Kind of reminds you, like, a level up effects. Yep, so you can see uh, three heals max once you get to Skilled. Which and is my soul in her. <clears throat> so once you use this ability enough times, it evolves again, and you get to Adept. <laughs> <laughs> Which you can see, uh, and her ability to heal the kids, uh, soul later, boys. Off of minions and gods, but you get significantly more skill for hitting gods. Mm -hmm. And like AJ mentioned, the passive meters due to our switch class constantly may not be entirely accurate in game. You're going to see it properly. So now ah. you're in the second evolution, you're at Adept, and she does a, a second Spear Thrust after the first, which is at a much longer range. Damn. The damage is equivalent for both hits. Much longer? That doesn't look much twice, longer. You get bonus definitely longer. So you're incentivized to hit the same target multiple times. Oh, can we see that targeter just away from yeah, the enemy say, targets real quick? Yeah, you see the extra, yeah, that's the extra bit that was added, and you'll see actually after you fire it, you get that extra targeter to, to help you. And on the first that. ability okay. as well, you have a similar kind of treatment once it's involved. So you can see a second uh, target portion to dictate where the third content will be. And That's this sick. here is a very iconic look for Chinese history as well, known for its uh, red ribbon or tassels mm -hmm. tied just below the blade. Cool. All right, so that was Spear Thrust. We're going to move right along here to Grapple, which when Pawn was this in his run through, I saw, I saw some This is sick. Yeah, I think that we got we're, a pretty good pretty Look at that there. range, so, bro. Grapple's Mulan's third ability and therefore her third weapon. She's going to be firing her bow, and that bow has an arrow. Pay attention to the travel time on this it. shit. If you hit an enemy, or if you, if you miss, nothing happens. You're just rooted for the a The travel while. time is you know, fucking fast. But if you hit an enemy, you and the enemy actually come together in the middle, and Mulan does an attack with her sword as she uh, reaches that enemy. So you kind of, you know, it's this gap close, it's this little bit of CC that she has in her kit. Uh, she's actually not got that much mobility as well, but we'll get into that in a second. Once you get that first evolution, which we see here, you actually get a protections buff, which is that aura you see around Mulan. Let's so, engage. Yep, you hmm. grapple in, you have this little protection buff with uh, that sets you up nicely for the rest of your abilities. And now at the second evolution to depth, you can now see the icon has changed again. And Mulan can now use it to walls to grapple. Oh, the walls. you have to level nice. it up to use walls. Okay, that's what I was um, wondering. Something that the players have been asking for for a long time, the, the wall grapple. Mm -hmm. It's pretty interesting here. You can do a lot of cool stuff with it to, to juke abilities. That's fucking sick. And 
We oh, this is gonna be the most annoying soul in the game. Here, so you can tell when you're gonna hit the wall. Yeah, if you don't see that little effects there, you're not gonna be hitting. So definitely wait for that before you try and grapple to the wall. Also, there's a little bit of a delay when she's firing her bow. So you have to be careful, you know, you, you're using this in situations where Someone you're not gonna in front of you. a lot of first damage because you're gonna be locked down and you're not Somebody's gonna be able gonna to get walk away. in front of your shit Just and eat it. to pull in enemies is a very strong to be fun. effect. I don't know if I she's gonna be gonna OP, but she's gonna be fun. Unless this ult is nuts. Team comps. Right. And then the ability to use it to walls just gives her a, lo a little bit of extra How much was the healing on the two? we're always exploring, trying to find new ways for mobility of our characters. Uh, instead of just dashes elite, this is gonna be a fun jungler and a soul laner. So this uh, takes a lot more planning, a little, a more skill and more execution to actually use. Her kid is dope. Right. Well, we didn't talk about it on spirit thrust as well, but just like we mentioned for the first ability at the third uh, master level, uh, spirit thrust gives you five percent power, and for grapple you get five percent permanent movement speed. So in what? total, that's attack speed, movement I'm speed, a bungler! It's a bungler! Movement speed! So Let's go! Go yeah. fuck yourself, right. soul laners! Uh, as we kind of talked about the we're ability, what are, what are kind of uh, your play styles that you're thinking for Mulan? Well, so one thing that we noticed immediately while playtesting her is that while she's definitely much, uh, you know, a pretty big brawler, AJ said it at the beginning, the 75, kind of okay. mixes between being a warrior and an assassin almost, the is crash. really a range you have to be careful about. So both of her abilities have a lot of damage up front, crashed it. And, but not a lot of range. 75 so for three, solo lane, three heals. Boxing, you need to be very careful that, you know, you get that entire minion wave, you hit the enemy god, but as soon as it comes time to back off, you play it very safe because a lot of other soul laners have a way of hitting you outside of the range of your abilities. No, nah, so because she's a warrior, because she's going to be insane in the soul lane, bro. Exactly. Until you hit late game when you start getting your things evolved, and there, then you just want to keep going and use that benefit of all the different abilities that have evolved. Yeah, I, I really like her agility, the way her animations have these multiple strikes. I think it fits really well with her visual theming. Mm -hmm. uh, it feels like it just fits her so much better than some big, heavy single hit. Um, any any additional thoughts on that, y'all? Her, her animations and her, <laughs> her her style, her fighting style? I think her fighting style, like, it makes to you fill think time. of like, the Chinese historical action dramas, which mm -hmm. is really cool, like, like um, was it the English? Um, Hidden Tiger? Wait. Crouching Tiger. Crouching tiger. tiger. <laughs> Hidden Tiger, yeah, that one. So, like, there's a lot of, like, squishy things. There's yeah. a lot. Then that's why, like, her um, clothing was designed to have these long tabbers, mm -hmm. um, especially in the back, so you can actually see them, like, moving, and it's, like, it's very, like, agile. It's very airy. I didn't um, see the... Also, I know like, the damage on the one was 150 on at max strike. I don't know what the scaling is. Are, the clouds and the wind. Wait, did the two or the three do damage? The two did. The two did 150 twice. What did the three do? No damage, right? Right, yeah. One thing I noticed that her moves are very much airy, but there's also like a lot of finesse in her movement, which kind of calls back to her being a soldier on the front line, right? All of her moves need to be efficient and do what they really She's very precise. She's, you know, used that battlefield's knowledge she's gained. She's bringing that to the battlefield of the gods now. Cool, awesome. And I just got word that we are ready to go back in game and check out her ultimate ability, Divine Mastery. Clumsy what is this ultimate do? Holy so, I mean, she's used all three of her different weapons in her kit, so for her ultimate, she's got to use all three of her different weapons. So if you hit an enemy, uh, well, we'll talk about that in a second. First, you start with a sword dash. So you're going to be hitting everyone in that uh, targeting area right there, and if you hit them, you root them. And as you finish that, you go into your spear hit, and then your uh, bow's arrow hit. So bring that down for a second. What is the damage? Sword dash, what are the roots enemies, and then you go right into a spear knockup, into just 150, a 200. projectile. And now since we've restarted the game, you can see that passive meter working as intended. So like 500 damage. It feels to see those little skill oh, yeah, with every right. hit. So using the ultimate, it's not that much. You can actually skill up all three weapons. Yeah, I wonder what the scaling is, bro. Hit. Do um, note that uh, since we're at level 20 here, every ability has been leveled up and ranked up. So the damage is pretty high. You're hitting multiple targets. We do expect a pretty good time investment. I mean, it wouldn't be a training arc if, if you got all of your abilities leveled up within five minutes. So for different game modes and for different situations, you're not gonna you're gonna have very different timings for your. This is to level really up. sick. But we would expect you know, it's pretty quick within the first few waves for the first evolutions, and then maybe another. I really don't eight to pay attention to it that deep usually, the but and the training our concept you might get is fucking evolution. awesome. So this ultimate is very powerful for engaging or disrupting team fights. You get a lot of CC and mobility. Through like what did the what the did the spear do in the all? knockup? You have full player control over each hit. So we are yeah, of course aiming, she's got to be CC immune. What the fuck? If you you're not CC immune, you get fucked. It doesn't do that much damage. In any order he wants. And the only qualifier is that you have to hit someone with the first sword slash, yeah. right? So if, if you, you just miss, use it to escape, you get no mm. benefit. You don't get the <laughs> if you only miss, that, you fucking nerd GG. You post spiral for a little bit. Because if you notice, after you use this dash, you are actually stuck in place. 
So this is the time for if enemies want to position around you. Yeah, you still die. Damage. You just can't be CC, but you're already can't move. But she is not actually as mobile after she uses her dash. Cool. So the kit is designed around the training and the three different weapons. And you the root, knock up, the and then just all come damage. Together here in the oh, ultimate. No, the spear is not the knock up. Three of those weapons a whole lot. So, uh, right? Or the, the bow, sorry. The spear is the knock up. What's the bow? What we didn't is that while that's on her all. gameplay hook, she actually has an additional passive on top of that. Oh, nice. Because that's kind of a great point. Yeah, the training arc is what you're Yeah, the CDR. Doing throughout this the battle. is common feedback we get from our players, too. If, like, the kit has a passive theme to it, then the god still doesn't have a passive that tends to frustrate players right. so but because of the game yeah, so it's a pretty root, big deal for knock it, up, the passive damage. is pretty simple and just helps exacerbate I wonder just what the scaling is bro a little bit and what it is is that every 10 if seconds scaling's you get a high, buff, I'm jungling this which shit. reduces the cooldown for all of your not for the next not ultimate ability you use by 2 seconds so what you really want to do is make sure you're keeping an eye on when you have the buff active and then choose which ability you kind of want to the cooldown on one of your abilities going to be evolved. so short if you have full CDR so you, you can just min max the way you want to pass mm -hmm. your skill you're going to be sitting at like deal, a lot of our 6 seconds CDR when we have some ability. high level players in there and they're using their abilities non-stop and just you know basically using it off of cooldown but if you just wait a second and choose to use you know your spear thrust before you use your cross strike you can start evolving it much more quickly without you even realizing it it's a fun additional min max you can do in the solo lane. Mm -hmm. um, I will say as well, since we're you know we're getting on that subject, choosing which ability to order is going to be a pretty big deal for Mulan because obviously the attack speed increase you get for the first evolution of Cross Strike versus the heal for the Spear Thrust is a, is a pretty in intimidating choice, especially when you consider that the Spear Thrust range is really short, so you're most likely not going to hit the entire wave. But it also has the sustain, which is, can be important. So. The, the rank up order for her has been hotly debated, yep. even internally, if it's the one or the two, or I think Pon Pon's been min-maxing her to like one point in the one and then two to three points in the exactly. two, and then you go back to the one. Or, that, like, that usually helps you get that clear, but, but it you, depends on the matchup. Yes, <laughs> it's, for sure. it's crazy. Well, I'm sure that uh, once the community gets their hands on her in PTS, mm -hmm. they'll give us uh, the exact correct way oh, to, for sure. to <laughs> pl pl play Mulan. So now that we've seen kind of how she fights, uh, we've got the voice pack ready. Can we kind of go through some lines? Yes. Attack. Defend the middle lane. Gank right lane. Attack the Titan. Defend. Retreat. Wow, wow. <laughs> and she uses some Chinese throughout the kit as well, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. You'll, you'll hear her use um, some of that throughout her abilities as well as some of her VGS lines. Especially in her abilities. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I think this is going to yeah, be a so fun god to play on and we without kind of being too complicated. A little bit earlier, but uh, we've got uh, the first recolor up here for you guys. Rising Hero Mulan, which is probably my favorite out of the bunch. I'm just a big sucker for green. It's mm -hmm. like my favorite color. Ooh, I don't know. Uh, there's another one that yeah. I really, really like. And then like. we've got uh, the next one up is Ascended. Uh, this is the mastery skin for Mulan, actually. Uh, this is the mastery card art. And this is probably my favorite card art from the group here. I like the different angles you get for these. Each one of them are coming from a different point uh, perspective. I think that's really cool. Yeah, and then actually there's one more recolor for Mulan, Ascended Mulan, and it's actually the limited reward from the season pass 2020. It's purple. Purple, it's nice. really nice. I really like that one. It's really nice. Yeah, I really, I mean, I love green too, so it's a tough call. You should tell you their yes, audio we still. We pass, know it's we'll fucked. access to the purple colored outfit for her yeah. and it is really cool it's gonna look slick so yeah you've got the the limited mulan you'll get all of her emotes oh her they're not gonna show pack. the purple plus if you don't have the god pack you'll get that with the season past 20 and we will be having gold you say lol limited recolor but purple lunch. is usually a fucking sick color nice. yeah I, I believe we see do, are like we one skins i think it'll be sick or not today uh not today yeah we're, we're saving them for pts to let players kind of go in and get their hands on okay them. no problem so we'll follow up with you on that exactly uh, as usual the goddess still has a few small technical and finer detail issues that we're going to be continuing working through the PTS, but please let us know if you see Definitely, anything strange yeah. in your testing. We're really looking forward to hearing the design and balance feedback on yeah, her. Yeah, absolutely. She's been a very interesting character that we've been playing a lot of like try hard solo lane matchups against. So yeah. we're really interested I mean, to see what the, what the pro well players feel. Yeah. As well. Jungle too, yeah. It's not been bad. You don't get to evolve your abilities as quickly because you get a benefit for hitting gods, but it's, it's still pretty pretty easy. Yeah, well, that's Mulan for you guys, the Ascendant Warrior. Remember, PTS is going to be live this weekend for you guys. We just need a couple days to make sure we hammer through our internal testing. But for now, we've got Smite Showcase coming at you right now. Thanks so much for tuning into the show, and we'll see you next time. I'll just Smite Showcase.